Clinton's book launch was expected to be an exquisitely stage-crafted and very carefully managed affair, and so it was sort of a surprise to find the former Secretary of State clarifying what some are calling the first unforced error of the 2016 campaign, except it's not really a campaign yet, and it is unclear whether it was actually an error. We came out of the White House not only dead broke, but in debt. Uh, we had no money when we got there, and we struggled to, you know, piece together the resources for mortgages, for houses, for Chelsea's education. You know, it was not easy. Surprising exactly no one, Republicans pounced, attacking the Clintons as wealthy and out of touch, a line of attack more commonly heard on the other side of the aisle. Never mind that criticism relating to America's top earners seems just a little contrived coming from a party that made individual success and the you didn't build that meme the centerpiece of its 2012 convention. After all, the Clintons did not come from money like some <coughs> other political dynasties. They also left the White House financially bruised by never-ending Republican attacks over Whitewater and Monica Lewinsky. But this morning's kerfuffle, if we can call it that, makes clear that Hillary Clinton is not immune to criticisms relating to just how well she's done and just how she's done so well. As Matt Iglesias reminds us, only rich people find themselves $10 million in debt, as the Clintons did when they left the White House. Quote, this wasn't some random financial misfortune that could have happened to anyone. This is a situation where the Clintons' ability to go so deeply into debt is a sign of the vast economic privileges they enjoyed. And these days, the Clintons have more than made up that early gap, earning more than $100 million since Bill and Hillary first departed 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But there was no mea culpa this morning. Instead, Hillary Clinton offered a passionate defense of why she's in this game in the first place, assuming, you know, that she's actually in this game. Bill and I were obviously blessed. We worked hard um, for everything we got in our lives, and uh, we have continued to work hard. I want to use the uh, talents and resources I have to make sure other people get the same chances. We understand what that struggle is because we had student debts, both of us. We had to pay off. We've had to work. I had a couple of jobs in law school. He had lots of jobs. So we've, we have uh, a, uh, a life experience that is clearly different in very dramatic ways from many Americans, but we also uh, have gone through some of the, the same uh, uh, challenges. Joining me now is Communications Director of the Democratic National Committee, Mo Alethi, and National Political Reporter with the New York Times, Amy Chozek. Mo, let me start with you. Um, is this an unforced error, or was this a conscious effort to sort of demystify the dynasty, uh, the dynasty quality of the Clintons? Well, look, I mean, you know, we always have to preface, or I always preface uh, these conversations by saying we don't know what she's going to do. But let me say this about the Republicans, who every day seem to find a new way to out-ridiculous themselves. <laughs> um, when, you, when you are the party that is blocking um, student loan and student debt relief, when you are the party that is blocking the minimum wage increase, when you are the party that is blocking increased investments in education and so many other policies that would help the middle class, you forfeit the right to pretend, to even pretend to be populist. Th this is an argument that just doesn't fly. I don't know what Hillary Clinton's gonna do, and I'm not sure Hillary Clinton knows what she's gonna do. But to the extent that, that the Republican Party wants to try to, pre to, to talk about economic populism and which party understands the middle class a little bit better, I'll put any of our potential candidates uh, up against them any day of the week. Yeah, you know, um, Amy, I, I get where what Mo is talking about here. Republicans are almost laying a trap for themselves that they're gonna start talking about economic policy policy and mobility in American society, right? But then there is the question of whether it's a good thing for Hillary Clinton to talk about the humble roots and sort of, you know, the debt that she and Bill accrued, given where they are today, which is incredibly financially secure, if you will. And it then brings up the, the question, which is really something that needs to be answered on, I think, the Democratic side of the aisle, which is how much do the Clintons, uh, you know, what, what issues do they feel they have potentially with the folks who have helped them make so much money. 
Oh, that's a good question. I mean, they definitely occupy this rarefied world of New York and the Hamptons that is quite different than when we, when we were first introduced to Bill Clinton as a governor in Arkansas jogging to the McDonald's in Little Rock. I mean, that said, this country has a long history of Democratic leaders from Kennedy to Rockefeller to FDR who have incredible personal wealth and yet are still champions of the poor. So I don't think that private income has anything to do with a progressive agenda, but I do think that she'll have to get out and convince voters that she does understand where they're coming from. She yep. hasn't had a hard time doing that. But let me follow up on that, Amy, because last Friday, all three Clintons uh, met with Clinton Foundation donors at a, Go a Goldman Sachs confab in downtown right. Manhattan. And you wrote that the location, the Goldman Sachs offices, underscored that Clinton is undeterred by criticism from the progressive wing of the Democratic Party that she's too close to the financial industry. Um, t Bill Clinton, in a, in a scathing quote in Tim Geithner's book writes or says you could take Lloyd Blankfein into a dark alley and slit his throat and it would satisfy them them presumably the progressive wing of the Democratic Party for about two days then the bloodlust would rise again how much do you think statements like that will be a liability in a Democratic primary well, look, I think Bill Clinton has an approach to economics that is very is pro-business, that is a kind of we're all in this together. And the rhetoric right now coming from that wing of the Democratic Party is that Wall Street are the enemies. And I think that's never been the rhetoric that you've seen from the Clintons. And in turn, they're very friendly to Wall Street. Will Hillary Clinton be the candidate of Wall Street? Doubtful if you look at her early positions on regulating derivatives and other things like that. But I think that in general, they're very comfortable with their position that it's going to take Wall Street and Main Street to get out of our mess. Yeah. Yeah, Mo, what about, what's your, what's your thinking on this? I mean, in terms of like Clinton Foundation donors, Goldman Sachs, Coca-Cola, Anheuser-Busch, Cisco, Duke Energy, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia. I mean, are, are these issues that the Democrats will litigate amongst themselves? I don't think uh, you're going to find a whole lot of Democrats out there who um, are going to be focused on this piece of it. Because ultimately, I think what unifies and ties Democrats together, uh, no matter what part of the country they're from um, or where on the Democratic spectrum they are, is that we are about helping anybody who works hard climb as high up the ladder of, of opportunity and as high up the ladder of success as they possibly can. What separates us from the Republicans is we don't mind and we actually encourage everyone to join us in climbing up that ladder as opposed to the Republicans who are sawing it off you know, behind, behind themselves. So, so that's what it fundamentally comes down to. It's not an us versus them mentality. It's how do we all, how do we all uh, get the same opportunities so that we can all climb up that ladder as, as high as we can. Uh, and, and that's what we did in the 90s. And that's what this current president's economic policies are designed to do. Uh, and, and that's what the other side just doesn't get. Amy, uh, let me ask you the big picture here. You are someone that has covered the Clintons in depth um, and Clinton world in a, in a, in a, in a thorough manner, shall we say. What is the strategy here? But the rollout, the, top, the interviews, you know, it was inevitable that something was going to get picked up and all of this media that then got dissected. We would be relitigating part of the Clintons, um, you know, history. Is this, is this a good rollout? I mean, do you think that Clinton World thinks that this is a necessary early step in terms of neutralizing controversy? I think it sort of just feeds into the whole inevitability meme, which was an issue for her in 2008. That's true. I think political reporters who cover her in 2008 sort of enjoy these past couple gaffes, if you'll call them that, because it says that she's not as scripted. She's not polling every single response that comes out of her mouth. And I think that that is sort of a refreshing sign from the candidate that uh, Mo and I saw in 2008. Hey, Mo and Amy Chozik, thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. After the break, it's primary day, and you will not believe.